With me in the studio, as always, none other than Gary Mason. We'll talk to him in a moment, but first, let's just remind you of what you can see Saturday morning at 2 a.m., the undisputed world heavyweight champion. There you go, Holyfield versus Holmes, live and exclusive on Sky Sports for the Undisputed Heavyweight Championship of the World. Saturday morning, 2 a.m. I'm looking forward to that. Are you? Yes, it's going to be a classic fight, and people's um, views are quite different as well. Some people say Holmes is going to win, some people say Evander Holyfield's going to win. Well, we, we, we'll go into it in more depth later, but we've stuck by Holyfield. Are you going to stick by that? Yes, I'll stick by the younger man always. We'll expand on that later. Just by way of getting a taster for that, we can have a look at some um, weigh-in pictures from Caesars Palace. Michael Buffer, the MC, will talk you through these. Let's just have a look at the condition the two boxers are in. Thank you, Al. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are approximately 48 hours away from the battle for the greatest prize in all of sports, the heavyweight championship of the world. We're going to get right to the way, and right now, ladies and gentlemen, conducting it for the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chief Inspector Mark Ratner. First up on the scale from Eastern Pennsylvania, he's the Eastern Assassin and former heavyweight champion of the world. Larry Hall! A bit chubby, Gary, isn't it? Well, Larry Holmes has always looked chubby. I know he looks slightly heavier than usual, but he's always had a physique, something like that. So, um... The challenger, Larry Hall, 233 pounds. 233 pounds, that equates to about 16 stone 9. Really? The same weight that I was in my last fight. Always in good condition. Let's have a listen to how much he weighs. Two hundred and ten pounds, fifteen stone, more or less what you'd expect. Mm, he's at he's a good weight. I think what the heavyweights that go up in weight have realised that you don't have to have sort of like sixteen or seventeen stone on you. You just got to be naturally big or get yourself to as big as you can be that keeps you as fit as you normally would be. Yeah, one thing he does do, he's a tremendous trainer, tremendous athlete, great physique. I mean, he's always in good nick, isn't he, Holyfield? Yes, he, well, he has to be, because he's going up against guys that they've got the natural strength, and you find that normally in a fight, the bigger man always becomes stronger towards the end of the fight. Yeah. We'll talk about sort of Holyfield Holmes more or less later on yeah. during the show, but rumours around about a few things that are going on. Um, Bruno's one of them. There was a rumour going around that Bruno could fight Foreman. Yeah. What do you say that? There's been a few headlines in the papers this week. Well, there's, there's all sorts of possibilities. It's all talk. I'd have to, you'd have to, I'd have to wait and see until they officially announce one because it could be just um, drama. Yeah, they've just been talking about it in Vegas. I mean, there's, there'll be a few names mentioned with Bruno, but I, I can't see Foreman taking on a Bruno fight, can you? Well, we, we've been talking the last few weeks about genuine fights, and um, the last person I mentioned was. Um, Mercer, and then you mentioned um, Tommy Morrison mm. and all that. We want some names mentioned. Yeah. Also, there were some headlines about Mike Tyson in the week. Um, he said he basically said that he, he don't think he'll ever box again. I mean, you know, if he's in for three or four years, he's got plenty you know, of time to change his mind. Didn't he, he has. He has. I think the story will fluctuate throughout the years. Tyson, I quit. That's one story. But having said that, you know, or oh, there's Holyfield saying I'm scared to go and visit him in jail. That was another one. But having said that, staying in good nick. I mean, he, he was doing 600 sit-ups a day, so whether he's just keeping himself in good nick or whether he sort of thinks he's going to fight again, I don't know. Well, whilst he's there, to train is an ideal thing for him. That's how he knows how to... That's what he knows to do. That will pass the time for him. And he's still going to be... There'll be days where he wants to fight and there'll be days that he won't want to fight. And I think if Evander Holyfield wants to go and visit Mike Tyson, he shouldn't be ashamed to go and do so. No, no, he's I agree with go that. And do it. That's the venue for tonight. Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Where else would you be for the World Heavyweight Championship? Just off the strip, scene of so many world title fights before, and that's where we are tonight for this ringside special. Holyfield versus Holmes. Hello, you're watching a ringside special right here on Sky Sports, where tonight, as you've seen, we're live and exclusive from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. 
With me in the studio, my regular guest, Gary Mason, and the blonde bomber himself, Billy Walker, the man who thrilled millions back in his heyday in the 60s. And he's got Cooper in trouble on the ropes. Henry had to fight his way off there because he was taking punches he shouldn't be taking. This is a tremendous effort by Walker in the third round. Billy, if it's half as exciting as that tonight, we're in for a thrill. It's good to see you. Yeah, bro, lovely. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Think you're going to enjoy it. We'll talk more later. Big chap, good to see you as usual. Nice to be here, isn't it? In good form? Sort of. Should be fun, shouldn't it? Well, we all know what we're here for. It's the ultimate prize in sport. It's Hollyfield versus Holmes for the World Heavyweight Crown. Day, wouldn't you? What, what are you yeah, expecting yeah. from him tonight? Uh, well, as, he, as he's aged, personally, I, I think that um, he's got to do it early. I think um, if he's going to win and wants to win, I think he's got to out start throwing some good right hands. He was a great puncher in his heyday, and yeah. as they say, it's the last thing you, you lose uh, as a heavyweight. So I think he's got to knock him out in the first or second round. If he doesn't do that, I, I think Hollyfield will stop him about the eighth. That's right. Yeah. So you're going along with me, a late, a late stoppage. Is that what you? I haven't heard. I've gone for a late, a late stoppage to well, hold yes, possible yes. point. No. Yeah, and I, I think he'll stop him. If he, if, if, but Holmes has got a chance in the first few rounds. All right. He used to be a good banger. He did, okay. and he's got a good chin too. Yeah. Gather, we know what you predict. Are you going to stick by that today? Yes, I'm going to stick by that. And one thing I've got to say is, remember, um, after Dave McCauley's fight, yeah. we asked somebody to give Dave McCauley an award of some kind. And the next day, the, fact right. the Queen watches the show, gives him an OBE. I was going to say, man, can I have an autograph? It's not for me, it's for my mum. <laughs> it was an MBE. <laughs> oh, so you're MBE right. I remember you saying at the time, oh, that, yeah. uh, for that, that fight, that guy should be honoured. That's right. Yeah, well, it's obvious that the Royal Tuesday watch this show, so please, can I have the autograph? Absolutely. Hello again. A ringside special live and exclusive from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Just before that welterweight fight I mentioned, let's have a taste of what we're really here for and take a closer look at both Evander Holyfield and Larry Holmes. The magnificent Caesars Palace Hotel and Casino, Las Vegas. Venue for so many world title fights. The arena tonight for Holyfield vs. Holmes. Evander Holyfield is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But he's lacking respect from the public, the media and Larry Holmes. And despite that, he still feels this is his time. Every man have their day. And Larry Holmes was the champion for seven years. And it just seemed to me that in seven years, you should have done all that you could. And um, I don't know, uh, did he? Evidently he did because now he's back in the wrong time. Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight champion of the world, now 42 years old, a professional boxer since March 1973. When he's done it all before and achieved so much, why come back at all? Money, fame, respect, and the heavyweight championship of the world. I got a chance to do it all over again. And this time, I did it right. Can he defeat a man 13 years his junior at the peak of fitness? A man whose rigorous training routine starts at 5 a.m. each day. Can Larry survive? It's all according to how, how long his body really is going to uh, uh, hold up under the constant punishment, uh, physical punishment, that Evander will be administering to him during the fight. Because I'm sending uh, my guy out from the first bell to do physical damage to uh, Larry Holmes. Experience will not be a factor. Holmes' record speaks for itself. 
Hollisfield wouldn't be where he is now without this. But what does home to trainer see as now his biggest asset? The jab is the hardest place to stop. If he's going to stop the jab, how's he going to mount any kind of offense himself? He's going to stop it with his face. Brave work indeed. We know Hollisfield gets caught, but his sheer speed and physical strength would surely be too much for the veteran home. Does Evander's camp see anything in home to be afraid of? Uh, a fighter that has a good jab, he's a problem. But uh, you have to know just what to do to you know, overcome that jab. And I think uh, the things that I've done with Holyfield is going to help him overcome uh, my home jab. So you have to break his jab. So, the stage is set. Now it's down to the two boxers, the champion and the challenger. When the fight's over, somebody's going to be quiet. On June 19th, when I take on the Vanda Holyfield, you're only going to hear one thing. And they will say, in the new heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Hall. And there is the champion arriving with his entourage for tonight's fight. Holyfield, I wonder what will be going through his mind. Some people think it'll be an easy fight, but the world title fight, you can never be that sure. Billy, what will be going through his mind? You never quite got to that sort of level, did you? But no, I mean, no. You had some important no, yeah. fights nonetheless. I, I think with him there, I think he, uh, he's on the hide to nothing, really. It's not, you know, like, um, uh, this guy's been there all before, um, um, Holmes, oh. and, uh, um, and now he's come back as an old man. It must be terrible if he was to get beat by that. That must be worrying, mm. to be beaten by an old man. I really, think win you know? or lose... He can't win because they, they, they scorched you've, him you've when he went the distance with Foreman. Exactly. And if it happens again, they'll scorch him again. So you just fight in old veterans. Then where are we? Where are all the young guys? Why are we? I feel like getting my gloves out again. <laughs> what are you now? 15? <laughs> 53. <laughs> a little bit too old, I think. Gazza, you've, you've had a few, but I mean, the biggest fight of your life was the Lennox fight. I mean, what was going through your mind when you came out for that? I mean, what, what, do you, what does he go through? What did you think about? Well, if, if, you, if I was Larry Holmes, I'd be thinking, Jesus, hope I can get this right-handed and stop him before he, he runs over me like a train. Yeah. And Evander Holyfield, he's just going to... He's right, what you said, he's going to be under a lot more pressure because, as he says, he hasn't been given the respect and other things that he thinks that he deserves. So he's got to go out there and try and take him out, take him out cleanly, and then he knows when he does that, they're going to say, well, it was only Larry Holmes. What about one of these young guys that are here lining up waiting for you? Yeah. And in all fairness, when Mike Tyson was a champion, at least he went through the list, didn't he? Mm. He yeah, didn't pick yeah. and choose, he went through the list. And that's what we expect from a world heavyweight champion. And Evander Holyfield, because of him coming up from a cruiserweight, he will be criticised until he starts going through the likes of Riddick Bowe, Lennox Lewis and Raider Ruddock. Well, he's, he's going to have to fight the winner of Bo Kurt, so we know that. But Holmes did say by his own admission he didn't expect to fight Larry Holmes because he thought Mercer would win. So, you know, it's not his fault that Holmes won, really. To be fair. No, no, in all fairness to him, Holmes is legitimate. He is a legitimate challenger because he did beat someone that was unbeaten and that had a title. And so you can't be grudging the fact that the, the title fight, but the fact still remains he is 42 years old and he is not supposed to win the world heavyweight title. Exactly. And some of us don't think he will. It's not long to go now until the main event, so it's time to take a closer look at the two boxers who'll be battling for the sport's richest prize. Firstly, the challenger. Larry Holmes, a man who's done it all before. Larry Holmes, the Eastern Assassin. Date of birth, November the 3rd, 1949. There's not much this guy doesn't know about life, in or out of the ring. Just look at the record. Two losses to Sphinx in 85 and 86, and a four-round KO by Tyson back in 1988. A wealth of pugilistic experience. Throughout Larry's career, he's had a reputation for fast hands and a good jab. And it's that jab that worries Holyfield's trainer, George Benton. George Benton is not fighting Larry home. And I'm not fighting Evander Holyfield. They're fighting each other. George Benton knows boxing, but I don't think he know enough to tell Holyfield how to stop Larry's jab. A jab is the hardest place to stop. If he's going to stop the jab, how's he going to mount any kind of offense himself? He's going to stop it with his face. Holmes' training has been relaxed, almost too relaxed. He's always playing to the crowd, however young. How you doing? Now give me a dollar. 
about his comeback was there for all to see when he fought Art Card. For the self-styled doctor of feudalism, how will he deal with the real deal? Burn the Holy Spirit. Great champion. Look at that physique. Strong. But what is he making a mistake? Look where his hands at. <laughs> He cannot fight me with his hands like that. Larry says he's fit and ready to go. There's no question he can trouble Holyfield as he did with Mercer. But Mercer was somewhat overawed. Holmes had time to play act. Questioning his belief, the doctor of pugilism is ready. All the talking is done. It's time for action. All the guys that I fought that threw everything they had at me. Holyfield hasn't fought all the best guys. So therefore he never experienced the competition. And I think he's gonna have the problem when he's meeting a guy like myself that knows all the tricks, he's gonna pull them all out and uh, and he's gonna fight him toe to toe, gonna give him his all. I'm going to fight him with every breath left into my body. And I think the Holy Spirit is going to have that kind of a problem. And so, the champion, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. He hasn't had the recognition that somebody in his position deserves, and win or lose tonight, he may still be considered in some circles as a no champion. Nevertheless, he's the man at the top, so let's take a closer look at how he got there and his preparations for tonight's fight. Evander Holyfield's day starts around 5 a.m. A devoutly religious man, he reads the Bible for an hour and is usually at training camp by 6 a.m. Pray hard, work hard is one motto. Along with another, believe and receive. Holyfield's beliefs have gained him the world heavyweight crown. And his career statistics are testimony to his ability. 29 years of age, 27 fights, 27 wins, 22 by knockout. For Evander to train at 6am, the whole camp must be there. Weights, coaches, conditioners, and the professor himself, trainer, George Benton. You know, if he was to train at 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, he would have probably moved around and, you know, had a lot of body activity. So, uh, this way, in the morning, he gets up out of bed, he's fresh. And uh, when he comes to it, into the gym, you know, he, he, he's fresh off of, uh, you know, resting all, all night long. And, you know, he's got more energy to train. That energy is there for all to see. Nobody escapes it. But if there is a weakness, it's his openness when throwing punches and his ability to get caught himself. Right up and cut from Holyfield. He's got good variety as well. The speed and those fish. Oh, it's a good right from Cooper. And that takes Holyfield up a bit. Holyfield was hurt by that. He's having to cover up. Goodness me. Holyfield's all over the place. He's really badly shaken. When I get hit with a good right hand, like the right hand I got hit with Bert Cooper, it's a fact is that well, what happened? Why did you get hit? Well, I got hit turning to him, 
So with that room trying to hit that one known the guy called it was a good shot. He beat me to the punch that time. The question is, will he take Holmes lightly? I doubt it. Holmes is not a 10-day substitute like Cooper, and the champs camp will know all there is to know about Larry Holmes. Experience only works when you got the physical condition to back up that experience and you got the talent to bring it back up to focus. If you haven't got the if you haven't got that physical and the, that mental drive, um, no matter how much experience you have, it's not gonna it's not gonna do you any good at all because all you're gonna resort to is safety first and survive and and and, and, the, and the bout. And that's what I think is gonna happen to Larry. Evander never got the recognition he deserved after the Foreman fight. Despite some blistering combinations, he failed to put Foreman away. But this quiet, genial man is putting back into boxing what he's taken from it. Whether it's by helping and encouraging children, or taking part in charity golf days and the like. He's strong, agile, coordinated, but he should stick to boxing. It seems a nicer guy you will not find. I've been with him for 12 years, I've been with him. 12 years I've been with him. I have yet, I have yet to hear him out of one curse word in that 12 years. And I think that's, that says something, especially in this business. Despite all this, the tabloids are quick to accuse and allegations of steroid use are right, but his camp are quick to confront the issue. Vander Holyfield was the first one to volunteer to take any kind of test available. George Foreman said it. And Vander Holyfield again volunteered to take any kind of test available because he's, and Larry Holmes has now brought it up again. Well, let's like test today. We got Dallas, they got great medical facilities here. Let's anytime. Do test today. Today. Vander Holyfield today, is willing right to here. do it anytime. Today. Anytime. Today. That's fine. That's the, we will do it today under one condition. We're going to shut your mouth and Larry Holmes is for, for good. We will put up one million dollars. No, 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 no. And if Evander Holyfield is on steroids, you got it. And if he doesn't, you put the money up. Because money talks and BS walks. Yeah. For all that, it's business as usual for Evander. The champ keeps doing what he does best. His fists do the talking and he still remains motivated. I'm here because I love the sport for number one. And that my youth is here and it's smart for me to stay here because I enjoy it. And the money is good. And there's a way that I can witness to people what's going on today. You know, how they can become stronger and how they can become champions, but not just in a boxing, but just in life. Well, there's the atmosphere. Sugar Ray Leonard, ringside at Caesars Palace. Gary, it was a couple of years since we've been there. It was tremendous atmosphere, wasn't it? Yes, it was a good one. Uh, so I remember um, the last time I saw Sugar Ray was training Vegas. He had that February in there. there he still got a win, isn't he? Yeah, he was well, having a drink or two. Billy, you ever been out there? Never to boxing. No. To gamble, yeah, but not to not to, to watch the I'd love to go and well, it's a great atmosphere, I would imagine. What happened? Did he take the test, Holyfield, do you know? Um, I don't know what happened, but I think they're, they're sad to accuse him. I mean, the guy's, the guy's put on... The guy's put on 20 pounds no. the right way. It's terrific. I mean, uh, tremendous. Look, Patrick Swayze in the crowd there. Tremendous. Atmosphere's electric. A heavyweight title fight is always a place to be at. You know, it, it, it's, it's one of the major events of any sporting calendar. It's like Ascot or anything like that. Yeah. Just reflect on the, on the steroid case. I mean, you know, they've accused the guy. Yeah. You know, he's put on 20 pounds. He's, Listen, he's yeah, Gary, I know we talked about steroids or whatever. I've got some stuff called vaccines. It's as good as all that. I thought he was saying <laughs> it's legitimate. Yes, it's totally. That's what he's using. He, he, doesn't, need, he doesn't need that kind of aggro, does he? All no, that, but that build up. see, in, you know what it's like? It's, it's boxing and people look for anything to discredit somebody else. And because he's so perfect, there must be something wrong because nobody's totally perfect and Evander Holyfield is perfect in every way so people are trying to find faults and that is one that could be an obvious fault it may not be a fault but people have to jump on it because it, it, it causes an argument doesn't it Billy when you fought you were about 13 eight. you were cruiserweight really cruiserweight yeah well I do weight I've never been over 14 in my life so uh, but cruiserweight wasn't there then I, everything over 12 7 you were heavyweight mm. and a lot of the great old old Sort of heavyweight champions of the past were sort of more well, or less the same yeah. way. Patterson, I think, won the title at 13 1. You know, and uh, and uh, who else was about him, Dave? Well, Cooper, he's still, I mean, when he knocked out or knocked, didn't knock out, when he knocked down Cassius Taylor, I think he was about 13 2. Yeah, but, and but still, no one was big. Would I be right in saying, remember when um, you had um, Liston came along and he fought Patterson? 
Everybody says that Liston was frightened of Patterson. Was that because Liston was, say, like, 16 stone in those days, yep. which would have made him a massive man Patterson was scared. Patterson. Patterson was scared of Liston, yeah, yeah, because he was a 13 stone man, and Liston came along, big, muscly, big guy, and I think he was just, well, he looked scared to me every time he fought him. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. gentlemen, not long to go now. Okay. So, we're off to Vegas soon for the richest prize in boxing, the heavyweight championship of the world. We'll be back after this short break, so don't go away. There you go, live and exclusive pictures from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. That's the atmosphere, building all the time, auditorium almost packed, all number of celebrities ringside. There he is, Arnie, the man himself, the Terminator. And that's the betting for the fight. If you fancy a bet, those are the odds. Hollyfield on the left, Holmes on the right. 101 Holmes to knock out Hollyfield in the first round. I'll work it out with Gary that if you stuck a tenner on every round, you couldn't lose. You'd make at least 200 quid, is that right, Gary? Yeah, something like that. Oh, so if I'd have known these odds before I'd have had a bet, <laughs> you think I'm joking. It's not like you not to have one, is it? <laughs> yeah. Now, what would be going through their minds now? It's just a few minutes to go. Atmosphere building up. They'll hear the roar of the crowd. Yeah, that, well, you know, you're sitting in the dressing room and you'll be concentrating on the job. Holmes may be not worried so much because he's been through this a million times before, but in a similar way, Hollifield has as well. So you're talking about two men with both got the experience, but the only thing is Holmes has sold his youth to get the experience that he's got, and you'll find that he needs his youth in there today. People say that, that Hollifield's less experienced. Let's not forget he's been a champion since sort of 1985, 86, cruiserweight albeit, but he had plenty of world title fights at cruiserweight before heavyweight. Yeah, that's right. He's been involved in all the big fights before, so he's there. What is... Hollifield is still not respected as a genuine heavyweight champion, and it's only because of circumstances. He has won the title and he has kept defending in it. There's very few people that have been able to win it, let alone defend it, so surely we should respect him as a champion, but as long as he goes on fighting older fighters or fighters who aren't that people don't consider to be the best, then we will always consider him not as a genuine champion. That's right. Billy, I, I think, I hope you agree with me, that Holyfield deserves a little bit more respect than he's getting. He's just a quiet man, but he, he does the job so efficiently. Yes, yeah, well, he has done so far. I mean, he has never lost. That's the point. Um, and everyone seems to forget this. And uh, I think this fight for him, he's the one that's worrying at the moment because he's got everything to lose because uh, he's, he's odds on favourite, whereas Holmes is sitting in the dressing room he, he's not expected to win. He's, uh, he's not the favourite. And also he knows he's got $7 million if he wins or loses, but with the chance of winning. So i got a feel Holmes is the more relaxed man at this yeah. moment. Yeah. There are a lot, lot of different rumours about why Holmes came back. I mean, he said in that interview that he came back to do it all again, but there was, there was rumours around that he had problems with his, with his, um, his, his property business. and yeah. his investments yeah. and stuff. And, you know, he could have embarked on it just for a laugh, but it's come true. Well, exactly, but I, I did worry about that because I always thought it, I had read that he was a very rich man and a very good businessman. But then I read some other articles that he lost a lot. And so maybe, who knows, maybe underneath his skint and needs the money. I somehow but, don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Wish I could make a comeback for seven million. Well, how old are you now? 53, a bit old. Bit, bit no, yeah, 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 a little bit <laughs> I'm glad I'm sitting in the middle because if you two <laughs> squared off, it could be interesting. The, I, would, I would say about five or six years ago or maybe a bit longer you'd have you'd have been able to come out and win the british title <laughs> you didn't tell me <laughs> <laughs> you remember when banjo banjo was a oh dear that's the worst i've ever seen in my life <laughs> alexander palace yeah. yeah oh yeah see Terrible. there's a great i don't know if there's a great great story here when um, did when hollyford fought a guy called seamus mcdonough yeah, yeah. Remember that? Right, well, it's yeah. a great, great story. He, he, he was he got in a lift with McDonough. McDonough started talking to him. He didn't realise who yeah, he was. Really, yeah. And he said to him, um, how you doing, bud? Started having a chat, this, that, and the other. And he said, um, hey, do you want to come to my fight tomorrow night? And Oliver said, no, thank you. I've already, I'm already planning to go. Now, that's like, now that, for me, epitomises the fact that he's kind of ignored. Despite who he is, he mm. kind of, people don't give him the recognition and, and don't recognise him. His opponent, the one who should be worrying about him the most, they don't recognise him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's not a good sign, is it? Just go back to the steroid thing. It's easy to put on 20 pounds, isn't it? Really. Just a bit of weight and the right diet, right nutrition. <laughs> Why do you ask me that question? Why do you ask Billy oh, that I, question? I, I, no, I'll ask. Gary, Gary, yeah, yeah. Gary's put on, he must have put on uh, six pounds a night. He's had all yeah. the sandwiches yeah. and the biscuits. Oh, no, no. <laughs> But it's, it's easy to yeah. do that. Do you think it's purely 
because they just want to try and needle him as much as they can. You, you see, anybody that's got a perfect record, you have to pick up faults. You have to find faults with him. And that could be something that you can pick at as a fault. Because he's, he's done nothing wrong where you can say, like, he'd lose because of this or because of that. So you have to pick up faults, and that happens to be just be one of them. And I'll tell you one thing that really, really interests me. What's that? I reckon they might have signed, win or lose, I reckon Larry Holmes and George Foreman may well fight each other. Because they had posters around saying it, and I think if Holmes loses tonight, he might fight George. And if he wins, he'll definitely fight George. If he wins, he'll definitely fight George, because that'd be the easiest defence for him. Exactly. But if he loses, it depends how long it's lasted and how much of a beating he's taken, because he might actually realise tonight that he's 42 years old and think, well, hey, I should be at home with my feet up, not in there. But surely, when he fought a young guy like Mercer, you know, he went, he went 12 rounds, he knew how gruelling it was, yeah. and yet he still came through that, so surely... Yeah. But when you, you win, tonight. it makes a total difference as to how you feel. If you lose, you, may, you manage to feel all the pain, all the hurt. If you win, you'd have gone through the same fire and you don't feel nothing. It's like falling down the stairs when you're drunk. That's right. No, I've never fell down the stairs when I've been drunk. <laughs> You've never been drunk either. No, correct. <laughs> you, you, this guy keeps making me lie, you know, in public. <laughs> so, Billy, what, what, would, what do you think will happen? Presuming Hollyfield wins tonight, he will fight the winner of Bo v. Kirk. Now, I know you stay, you know, old-timer as you are, forgive me, but I know you stay close to it. Yeah, Riddick well, Bowe against Pierre Kurtzer. I think I've got to have a bow on there, don't you? Honestly, I, I No, can't. I think you're right. Yeah, I think Bowe will be. And then that'll be a good fight. That'll be a good test. And uh, also, I think uh, I'd like to see him in with someone like Moore, who can really punch. Yeah. Moore is a good fighter. I like now, we both Moore, rate Moore, and I I mean, I've spoken yeah. to you Very privately much. about this. You're a big fan, too. Mm. Why? Mm. Well, he's my type of fighter. I saw him fight the other, the other week. He went against Cooper, was it? Yeah. And yeah. he went, got knocked down. Nearly got knocked out, got off the floor, got himself together and come back and knock the guy out clean. Lovely punch. And which, which Hollyfield couldn't knock him out, could he like that? Couldn't knock Cooper out. Mm. And uh, I thought he was good. And the fact that he's a southpaw as well, which yes. none of the other heavyweights are used to facing. No. A southpaw, that can punch. But um, because the best fight, we talked about it earlier, could be, because he looks like getting a, a jail sentence. Mora. Mora. Oh, yeah, that's so he could yeah. have Tyson and Mora in the nick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 one will be in Indiana and one will be in Detroit, so that might yeah. be a little oh, bit right. They can get, yeah, get a penitentiary <laughs> in the middle. I'd go, but I'm not carrying any money in my pockets there, am I? Is there anyone else around of all the, the young crop that you've seen that you like? I know Mora, you said Bo. Mora, Mo Bo. Um, Lewis is coming on. I mean, I do. I, 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 I like Lewis uh, yeah. because he... He, he, he has a go and he goes in and fights most people that are... That yeah. he, and he's also fought a lot of English people, like um, which I've never seen any of other heavyweights do. Yeah. And they fight other opponents in our own country, which yeah. annoys he, me sometimes, yeah. but none of our heavyweights do. But do you not think, like Gary and I, and a lot of the public, a lot of people that write to me on ringside, that fighting Ruddock is a very dangerous thing? <laughs> Fighting's a dangerous thing. Hey, you've got to... If he wants to be champion, he's got to fight the top of the tree. Yeah. I mean, one of the I mean, how long is he going to wait till he's 30, mm. 40? I mean, like these others. You've got to get, if he beats him, he's right in line for a world mm. title fight. And he deserves yeah. an awful lot of credit for taking that fight. Of course he does. And, I, and I, 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 I'm with him all the way, and I'll be, I'll be there, I hope, cheering yeah. him. And if he wins, then he's in for yeah. a world title yeah. fight, which would be great. Your, your thoughts on Lewis Ruddock? I know, you know, we both said it's very, very dangerous. Yeah, it's a very dangerous fight, but as Billy was saying, we, we need some real fights we want to there are too many people that want to win world titles but don't want to be champions at least Lennox Lewis is going about and he's saying I want to be champion I want everybody to know that I'm better than everybody else and he's going through as I said he, he took the European title from Chene he took the British title from me he took the Commonwealth title from Derek Williams he's offered everybody else out there who wants me you can have me I'm up for taking if you don't want me mm. I'm gonna go and fight people that are better that are good or supposedly good we know Ruddock's good, so that's why Lewis is going for him, and all credit to him for doing it. Yeah. Exactly. And one yeah, thing that yeah. should be said is, you against Lewis was a big draw, big yeah. fight. Mm. Bruno, it could happen, couldn't it? Yeah, it's, Quickly. It, well, it, well, it's, it's up to Frank. It depends on how, how, whether Frank wants to win a title or whether he wants to be champion. We'll if see. Frank wants to win a title... We're going to go live now. Prediction, Hollyfield or Holmes? Oh, it's, oh, it's just got to be Hollyfield. I'd, I'd eat my, I'd eat, I'm going to eat Billy's tie. If, uh, if Billy, <laughs> Hollyfield, Hollyfield. <laughs> Hollyfield. Right, let's go live. Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas. It's what we're here for. 
There's Larry Holmes. Let's take you over to your commentary team, Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. Thank you, Gary. Crackling atmosphere in Las Vegas. Film stars, sports stars, 16,000 fans under the desert stars as 42-year-old Larry Holmes, almost unbelievably, comes back to try to regain the world heavyweight title he held between 1978 and 1985. This will be his 24th world heavyweight title fight tonight. Experience is something he doesn't lack. Well, a lot of the American boxing riders, though, have derided this fight. They say that Larry Holmes shouldn't be here, that it's a joke and even trying. What do you think, Glenn? Well, he's here. He's got a, an immense amount of experience. I remember being here watching him in 84, 85 against David Bay, and he was fabulous then. So it's just how much of the old magic has he got. When he was when he was champion, he was a fabulous champion. He was strong, could bang, could box, had great recuperative power, could get about the floor and win fights. It's just what he's got. I'm not sure if he'll have enough now. I think his time may have run out, but he has one last chance. Well, he's a grandfather now, to be exact. 42 years and seven months old and only one man has ever fought for the heavyweight championship of the world at an age older than that that was Archie Moore in 1956 against Floyd Patterson if Holmes wins tonight he'll easily be the oldest man ever to hold the title that record standing at the moment to Jersey Joe Walcott who beat SR Charles in 1952 at the age of 38 years and five months Holmes has trained well, he's conditioned himself well, he produced a superb performance to earn this title shot by beating Ray Mercer. But Evander Holyfield is a lot faster and a lot better conditioned, I would suggest, than Ray Mercer. It does have the, the makings of quite an interesting fight because Holmes was a great champion, and I think, in my opinion, Holyfield is a great champion. But, Holly, but Holmes always had, he was always a very good survivor. You know, he could always get up the floor and manage to hang on in there. He was, you know, had a very good defense. So that's going to be very interesting. That's the thing he's going to need tonight. So Larry Holmes gets a really good ovation. His popularity, like that of George Foreman, the other granddad seems to have grown in his comeback. That's his complete record, and what a record it is. 54 wins, only three defeats. And remember, he won his first 48 before losing for the first time to Michael Spinks, who incidentally is among those at ringside tonight. A veritable who's who of celebrities have paid to get in here well i doubt if they paid actually they probably got free seats at ringside if i'm honest with you it all adds to the cachet of the occasion well who's gonna ask arnold schwarzenegger for his tickets yes that's right you wouldn't have an argument with him otherwise it would be hasta la vista baby wouldn't it <laughs> well here comes the champ evander holyfield Beaten. He is in nine world title fights. They tried to pay scant respect to this man, particularly after what happened against Smoking Burt Cooper when he was in desperate trouble in the third round before coming back to win his title. They've said that he is not a great champion, he's only a useful one, and when he fights a real good heavyweight, he'll be found out. But Holyfield has the answer, doesn't he? He just keeps on winning and winning and winning. And he is the heavyweight champion. And I reckon that this fellow must be among the very best conditioned heavyweights there's ever been. He is. He's a, he's a great champion. His dedication is superb. And I think that's what kept him on through the winning the Cruiserweight title, unifying it, then the heavyweight title, and being undisputed king. He's a, he's a great, great fighter. And I think the people that pull him down are wrong. He's done nothing wrong. You know, he's, he holds his title with class and with dignity. Well, 
You were hearing back in the studio about the scurrilous accusations made in the midweek about the possibility of Holyfield being on drugs. Bob Arum, the promoter, making that allegation. Uh, Larry Holmes was rather embarrassed by that and apologised immediately to Holyfield. There is no suggestion at all that the man is on steroids. He's built up 20 pounds over the last few years by normal methods and was very much hurt by those ridiculous and unfounded drug allegations against him. Unbeaten in 27 contests. Evander Holyfield, the world heavyweight champion. It, it's also funny how nobody has, has thrown them accusations at Michael Moore, who put on a, a lot more weight than Holyfield. I think they always just want to knock the guy who's on top. Yeah, it was all part of the hype, really, building up the fight. Same as those posters that they put around for a Holmes Foreman world heavyweight title fight. That may happen if Holmes wins, but it was just another Bob Arum attempt to try to scare Holyfield or put him off his game. Holmes, look at that, 13 years older. Big reach advantage there for Larry Holmes. He's got that great jab still, of course. And Holmes at 16 stone, nine pounds. Holyfield a rock solid, 15 stone dead. MC Michael Buffer waiting to give the introductions in the ring. June's a good month for Larry Holmes, you know. He won the title in this month against Ken Norton 14 years ago and 10 years ago in this city he had that big win over Jerry Cooney a night when he earned 10 million pounds but tonight he's earning another 4 million pounds and Holyfield is on 10 million big money with this uh, pay-per-view that they have nowadays in America the way that works by the way is that people in America who want to watch this fight on television have to pay $35.95 to do so. Now, there are the state rules for Nevada. Three knockdown rule is in effect. You can only be saved by the bell in the last round of the fight. The referee is the only man who can stop the fight, but if the doctor advises him to do so in 999 cases out of 1,000, that is what he will do. Holmes has already got the crowd on his side. They're already shown Larry, Larry. Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents a featured bout of the evening. This bout is dedicated to the memory of Chuck Minker. It is sanctioned by the WBA, the WBC, and the IBF, with the approval and sanctioning of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Luther Mack, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Bruce Lane, and Dr. James Nave, Chief Inspector Mark Ratner. Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Flip Homansky. Attending physicians, Dr. William Berliner and Dr. Robert Boy. The timekeepers, Mike Lachella, counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Bicek. The scoring for this foul will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges assigned ringside are Carol Castellano, Glenn Hamada, and Chuck Jampa. And once the bell rings, the man in charge of all the action working for the 66th time in a world title bout, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at 233 pounds. His overall career total for 54 victories against only three defeats, with 37 KOs to his credit. For seven and a half years, he ruled the division, making 15 defenses of the title. Tonight, he returns to Caesars Palace, where he won it all in 78. Ladies and gentlemen, from Easton, Pennsylvania, the challenger, former heavyweight, champion of the world, the Easton assassin, Larry Holmes! 
Larry Holmes is telling him he made 20 defenses of the title. Wearing the gold trunks and white trim, weighing in at an even 210 pounds. Since 1984, Olympic bronze medalist was the first of the great 84 team to win a world title, becoming cruiserweight champion in only his 13th bout as a professional. Since moving up to the heavyweight division, he's maintained a perfect record, which now totals 27 victories without a defeat, 22 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, the two-time world champion and current undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Deal. called into the center of the right, ring for final instructions from Mills Lane. We've been through all the instructions, just a tough, clean fight, and get these belts at all times. Any questions from Mr. Holmes or his corner? Any questions from Mr. Holmes or his corner? Let's get it on! All set here in Las Vegas is Larry Holmes about to cause a sensation? Can he make history by becoming the oldest world heavyweight champion of all time? Evander Holyfield thinks not. The bookmakers think not. They have Holyfield here at an 11 to 10, or 11 to 2 on favorite, I should say, to keep his crown. Holyfield in the yellow trunks. First round, due to go 12, and a fast start from the champion. I think Holyfield's wanna, he's gonna wanna come out and get this job done as quick as he can. He looks very focused in the corner. Holmes came back before, remember, coming out of retirement to fight Mike Tyson and he was demolished in four rounds and we thought that would be the last we ever saw of him. But he's back again. And I must say, that night when he lost to Tyson, I never thought I'd see Larry Holmes in another World Heavyweight title fight. Remember though, that a 42-year-old George Foreman did last the full 12 rounds with Holyfield and acquitted himself with great credit on that occasion. Holyfield will have to watch that sharp ramrod jab that has always been such a feature of Larry Holmes' work. Yes, he's always had a, a very good jab. In his head there, it was, it was second to none. Also, a very good right hand, which he tried there, but never quite came off. But he's very fast, Holyfield. He's got a, a great repertoire of punches, and he bangs with, with both hands. He's not noted as a real big heavy puncher at heavyweight Holyfield, but he does tend to wear people down and he is tremendously conditioned and can really put the punches together to finish off opponents. Holyfield taking the initiative in the opening round. was a feeling, I must say, going into this, that one thing Holyfield really would have over Holmes was far greater mobility. Yes, and he will have that. I think also he'll have strength. He's a superbly conditioned athlete. But this is where Holmes is good. Holmes can spoil a fighter. He can close him down. He can stop his arms working. I think that's what he's going to have to try and do. Holyfield still really with the job of trying to convince the public that he is, as he says, the real deal as a world heavyweight champion. He'll certainly, I think, want to do a number on Larry Holmes tonight and finish this early. Holmes gets him with a right hand right on the bell. Evander Holyfield, I think, will have taken the opening round on the scorecard of the three judges. He did most of the work. And the corner expressed satisfaction with that opening round. Lou Duva 
Holyfield the champion in the yellow trunks, the 42-year-old grandfather Larry Holmes in the white trunks here. Everybody's talked about uh, that a key weapon for Holmes is going to be his left jab. But Evander Holyfield has good head movement. He's just from side to side, so he may be able to avoid it. Holmes literally toyed with Ray Mercer when they fought a few months ago, but uh, I think Evander Holyfield is going to be an entirely different proposition for Holmes. He's trying to maintain a fast pace. I think this is where we might see Larry Holmes from time to time, or for a considerable amount of time in this fight, is up against the ropes. I don't think he'll want to move that much, because that's just going to take a lot of steam out of his legs. I think he'll try and do an alley rope with those. Holmes trying to conserve his energy and counter punch off those ropes and he did score with a nice right uppercut in that exchange good punches from Holmes there and the tactic worked for him then taking a lot of punches on the gloves and arms using all his experience and coming back with his own counters smart work from the ex-champion showing all his guile Yes, and he's going to need it. He's landing with some good of a cut. But Holyfield's content to stand right in front of him. And I think Holyfield actually found the target with much there. He's just uh, hitting the elbows and gloves. And look at Holmes. He's landing with the better punches in this second round. Well, this is obviously part of Holmes' battle plan. It is a variation on that old Zaire rope a trick of Ali's. Stay there, take the shot, cover up and counter. Yes, he's got to try and use his experience. He can't match Holyfield for strength and for, for use or for fitness. He's got to try and use his, all them fights, all that experience from them fights. Good right cross from home. Holyfield trying to club him at close range. Remember, Holmes here with a weight advantage of one stone and nine pounds. Between the men who own him, you're mine, you belong to me, and the girl who... That was a, a low shot followed by a good of a cut on the chin. He worked well at times in the corner. Good point, good point, good point. Well, that was the low one, and that was the other cut through the middle. I gave Larry Holmes that second round. I thought he landed with the punches that mattered there. Yeah, he certainly did the best of the work with his back against the ropes, and he was obviously confident with the round because he managed to rub Lou Duver on the head at the end of it. Holmes has been genial in the build-up. He's had a smile on his face. And he's looked so relaxed. Even swapping jokes with the MC during the ring announcement. You see, he's been there, he's done it so many times before. He's been a little like George Foreman on his comeback. You know, this time around he's a lot older and he's enjoying it a little bit more because the pressure's off. Once again, Holmes on the ropes. Holyfield looking to find a way through. Holmes saying that I'm going to expose this fellow who calls himself the real deal. In my day, Holyfield wouldn't have been heard of. He wouldn't live with Ali, Quarry, Frazier, Shavers, Norton, or me, come to that. That's what Holmes was saying. Well, was it just hype, or can he deliver? Well, he, he was probably telling the truth, because Holmes, Holyfield was probably only about 11 years old at the time. Good right, Holyfield. And another, another good right. Starting to get through now, in this round.
Holyfield is one of those professionals who just always seems to find a way to win. He has been shaken up in the past, notably by Cooper in his last defence. But even then, he survived and he delivered the victory. Holmes trying to just kid his way through it. The old fox trying to give away 13 years. Holyfield throwing the shot, but not really getting through with anything big at the minute. <laughs> now he's just talking and nodding to Holyfield, who takes not a blind bit of notice, just comes back in again. Good right on the counter from Larry Holmes, and a body shot too. And this time it's Holyfield who has to get the gloves up. Holmes is going to try and unsettle Holyfield. But Holyfield's a, a true professional. He just gets on with his job. And I think he's going to be there in front of Larry Holmes as long as he wants him. Interesting round. I think Holyfield will have taken it. Well, three rounds gone, and those who thought that Holmes would be put away in double quick time have already been proved wrong. Here comes the fourth round. Holmes is not doing too badly at all so far. Now, Holmes has done quite well. He's managed, you know, he's, again, he's got good survival technique. He's messing the van der Holyfield about a little bit. But he managed to do that to Mike Tyson for a few rounds as well. But I think Holyfield will buy this time and just try and wear Holmes down. for fun for an awful lot of years before he ever got paid sums like the 10 million pounds he's getting tonight. Holmes inviting Holyfield in and hoping to catch him on the way in. Yes, I think that's what he's looking for. He's looking for a, a counter punch. He's looking to come out with a big right hand. Holyfield not necessarily too willing to buy it. <laughs> yes, Holyfield's trying to use his head as well. He's not, he's not that keen to come inside. He's stepping off and trying to bring Holmes out of them ropes. Right cross from Holyfield, uh, from Holmes rather, off the rope. He's very dangerous when he's in that position. Waiting and watching for gaps and then exploding his punches into them. Great closing camera shot here. And you can score pretty easily here. You can see what's landing on the glove and what's getting through. <laughs> like that left from Holyfield. That found its target. <laughs> Four fighters land with good shots inside. Right cross from home. Attritional inside battle. Oh, and that right. Finding the target too from Holyfield. Well, it's developing into pretty good battle, this one. Let's go on out there. There's the Evander Holyfield hey, corner. Come George on. Benton. Run the Lou Duver there. in there. Come on. Now listen, when you get close, get hands on the arms and the shoulders. Right. You gotta go two hands. You gotta go two hands. Come on. Now, let me see it. I don't get a idea. Well, they don't sound amazingly happy with Evander Holyfield so far. 
I think they want him to do a, a little bit more work. You heard George Benton there shouting for him to, to work on Holmes' arms and shoulders. So his arms will be too tired to, to throw the jam. A trick Rocky Marciano used to do to very good effect. He used to batter his opponent's arms so they could hardly keep their hands up. Talking about Marciano, Larry Holmes once got into serious trouble when he said that Marciano couldn't have carried my jock strap. That really did unleash a rumpus. Didn't make him exactly Mr. Popular. I think Larry regrets ever having said that about uh, one of the great world heavyweight champions. Yeah, time Larry's had a thing about putting his, his foot in his mouth. And uh, certainly that was a very bad thing to say. Marciano was a great, great champion. But uh, Holmes has always fought for that respect. He's always, he's never really got it. He never really got the recognition of the great. And I think he always wanted that, and that always upset him. Well, if he can pull this one up, up tonight, he may get that. Holmes, who's amazed that he can earn four million pounds at the age of 42. He says it's like robbing a candy store and not getting caught. He's taking an awful lot of Holyfield shots on the arms and gloves, and the judges will have to take due note of that. Holyfield's coming forward a lot. He's throwing a lot of punches. How many of them are landing is pretty difficult to tell. Those landed all right. If you come back there with a good left hook and right hand. And these shots, they will take effect. Even if they land on the arms, they all hurt. A lot of this close quarter stuff. Oh, look at that right uppercut from Holmes. He's still dangerous. The suspicion is that Holyfield is just out working him. Holmes has got to do a little bit more, but he is scoring with some handy punches like that. Well, that's the shot that Holmes has got to go for. He's got to go for that right hand, because Holyfield at times does throw his shots with his left hand dangerously low. It's a bit of a hiding to nothing this for Holyfield once again, as it was against Foreman. If he doesn't beat Holmes inside the distance, it's going to be regarded as an unconvincing performance. Sixth round coming up, live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Open air crowd of 16,000 watching on and absorbed because so far, Larry Holmes still has a chance of causing the big upset and winning the World Heavyweight title at the age of 42 years and seven months. Holyfield trebling up on the jab. And Holyfield's doing everything right at the minute. He's keeping constant pressure on Larry Holmes. And that's what he's got to do. He's got to tire him out, wear him down. He's got to be looking to try and do the best of his work in the second part of the fight where it's going to hurt Holmes the most. That's the question, really, as this goes on with Holmes's age. Will his stamina just dry up? He could run out of gas at any time. Holyfield is keeping up the pressure, keeping up the pace on him. Will Holmes start to become discouraged? the longer this goes on. Holmes has done quite well so far, but he's got to do more work, really, if we're talking about actually winning the fight. Yes, I think he's done quite well and still been there. But to me, you know, he's trailing in, in all of the rounds, except maybe the first. Holyfield always likes bouncy on his feet. He actually has a 70-year-old ballet teacher who helps him with his footwork. 
He's a true professional. He has a course for every different part of training. He works very, very hard at, at his boxing, and you know he's a a righteous champion. Undefeated in six contests as world cruiserweight champion, and in three as heavyweight champ. Holyfield's pushing Holmes along the ropes. I think he's trying to use his strength, his physical fitness in this fight. Well, those are good shots from Holyfield. He got through that high-held guard. He's starting to find a way through now, Holyfield. Yes, he's finding the target a lot more now. And Holyfield's right hand isn't coming back as snappy. And he's, he's not landing his jab. Is reality beginning to crowd in on Larry Holmes? That was his worst round yet, and the best for Holyfield. Welcome back with the news that Evander Holyfield is now being treated for a cut by the right eye. There it is. Uh, the corner think there was a butt in there. Referee Mills Lane says he didn't see one. Seventh round. And a new part to the equation. And Holmes now has seen the cut and will start snaking out his jab in towards that. Just at a point in the contest when Holmes might have be beginning to lose faith a little bit because Holyfield had had a pretty big round. It looked quite a, a nasty cut in an awkward place right in the corner of that right eye. Luke Dover complained bitterly that it was a butt and on a slow motion we've seen the end of it. It looked like it may well have been an elbow. And nonetheless Holyfield is cut. professional boxing to make that cut even worse chance of Larry Larry from the star sprinkled crowd here he is the sentimental favorite good jab from Holyfield three jabs there jab into play again as well this is when Holyfield is starting to look most effective when he starts crashing those punches through the guard and into the head with Holmes on the ropes and Holmes isn't countering quite as much as he did in that situation uh, say in the second round when he had a good one Holyfield's working well again he started a little bit tentatively but now he's back to pushing Holmes against the ropes and starting to work inside I think he may be, a, he's a, well, he's obviously a little worried that that could get any worse when he's in close. He's trying to get home to stay at distance a little bit. And he's using that jab a lot more, Holyfield. Holmes has snapped out his jab a few times, but the heavier shots coming in here, some of those landing on the elbows, but one or two getting through to the body too from Evander Holyfield. Larry Holmes, who earned only $300,000 when he first fought for the World Heavyweight title 14 years ago, and tonight on $7 million, £4 million. Pounds. Not a bad round for him at all, that one. Yes, that was a, a better round for Larry Holmes there. I think he was a little bit inspired by the fact that Evander Holyfield has a cut. Here's how it happened, we think the cut. We think it might have been an elbow there of Holmes going around the right eye of Evander Holyfield. That was in the sixth round, the round before the one you've just watched. And they're still working on it there. Yeah, they're going to have to work hard. The cut man is going to earn his money now. 
Here, here it is again, Glenn. There. Yes, that looked what did the damage. It just seemed to... He brought his head down on Holmes' forearm and his elbow. Yes, right on the eye. Let's go now. Come on. Well, that's the value of excellent camera work there. You saw, I think, exactly what caused the cut. Doesn't seem to be too much of a problem for Holyfield at the moment. Holyfield is unlikely to tire down the stretch, such as his conditioning. But what about Holmes? Mind you, we were asking all the same questions when he fought Foreman, and Foreman fought quite excellently. Holmes is talking to him in there. They touch gloves. Two really good knowing pros. Holyfield got through a good combination there. Double jab, right hand. And another one. Left hook to the body, right hand over the top. He needs to keep the pressure on Holmes. He needs to really make him work. Holyfield is in control at the moment. But he does have the eye problem. I'm surprised that Holmes isn't using that jab of his more. He's just started to do it now. But really when Holyfield's eyes is cut like that, he should be sticking it out all the time. Good right hand, nice and fast from home. He's still got some of his speed. But he's only doing it in spasm, and Holyfield is just keeping up a fairly relentless pressure. He's just doing more work, isn't he, Holyfield? Holyfield's are working him as he should. And he's doing a good job, but I think he could probably step it up gear again if he really wanted to. Holyfield, uh, Holmes is very good at, at this sort of work, tying him up. He keeps a, a good high guard when he's up against the rope. And it's very, very, very hard for for Holyfield to get good clean shots in. How much different a fight might this have been if the Holyfield of today was fighting the Larry Holmes of 10 years ago? Now there's a question. <laughs> I don't think I've got the answer for you, Ian. I bet I know what Holmes's answer would be. Well, Holmes hasn't done that badly up to now. He's in there. He's putting up a fight. And he looks sharp at times. But the minute Holyfield is just out working him. Bell goes to end the round. Holyfield's round, I think. And that's the theme under the desert stars here again. They get to work on that eye. The jab's working good for you, they're saying in the Holyfield corner. Nitron, then, uh, you're way ahead of him. You're going to box this guy out smart, this guy. Keep him in the center of the ring. Yeah, keep the power, only guy goes to the room. Just back off. You understand? Keep him in the center, because he can't do nothing to you when you circle him. You see that? Okay. See? Now do what you're told to do. George Benson box doing the, the talking. Keep him okay. Get the hell over that rope. Don't let him get back on that rope. You see, that's his, his, his thing. Yeah. And he's trying to pinpoint you, trying to knock you off with that right hand, because he's, you're giving him leverage. Okay. Got it, got it, get off. Now get keep off. him in the center. When he goes back to that rope, you back off. You understand? Okay. Now, that's, uh, that's a good insight. Holmes landing with a greater percentage of punches in that round according to the computer printout. Ninth round. Holmes starts fast. Holmes under instructions, or Holyfield under instructions, to keep Holmes in the center of the ring and not be drawn into the ropes where Holmes can counter. Good work from Holyfield there. I wouldn't have agreed with uh, the computer that by saying that Holmes had the, the better percentage. I would disagree with that. I thought Holyfield 
won the round and threw the more shots and the more scoring shots. Yes, uh, you are sometimes suspicious because somebody must be putting those uh, stats into the computer somewhere. One of our American television colleagues. I must say, it looked to me like Holyfield won that last round. It's interesting to see that George Benton is telling Holyfield to stand to keep Holmes in the middle of the ring. Well, Holyfield put so much into that left there that he fell off balance. He smiles ruefully. Yes, I, I find it interesting that George Benton's saying that. I think, you know, maybe the centre of the ring suits Holmes more, who has the better jab. I'd have said maybe it's a better ploy for Holyfield to, to push Holmes back. Lennox Lewis is watching this fight, British and European champion. He has five rounds so far to Holyfield, two to Holmes and one draw, and we hope to be speaking to Lennox after the fight. I wouldn't disagree too much with that scorecard, but uh, how the judges are seeing it, we don't know. We've seen some eccentric things in the past. Yeah, I've got my card, I've got Holyfield four rounds ahead. But Holmes is still there and he's, he's putting up a good fight. And he knows enough and he's got enough guile and experience to possibly make some people feel that this is a less than spectacular and convincing performance again from the champion. Well, Holmes was a great champion, only three defeats on his record. So he's obviously got a, an immense amount of experience. Yes, I don't think you'd have found Holmes coming back to go back in again with Tyson. I think he had enough of that that night. But uh, Holyfield, he thought, was a different proposition. Bell goes to end the ninth round. They go back to the corners. I must say on my scorecard, I have... Holyfield fairly comfortably ahead at this stage of the contest. There are the oldest challengers for the heavyweight title. Archie Moore, the oldest, in 1956. And Holmes there, the second oldest to go for it. Foreman who also fought Holyfield in the number three slot there. And Jersey Joe Walcott actually won the world heavyweight title at the age of 38 years and five months against Ezra Charles, all of 40 years ago. That's what you do. Now that was a good round. You grabbed him to death. Keep, keep it going. As long as, no, as long as you're moving around, so we, the guy can't do nothing to you. We can't complain about the old-timers in the business that much these days, because there's a few old-timers about back then as well. Well, the way things are going, you never know. Billy Walker could be back soon. <laughs> Billy was back in the studio, providing us with expert comment tonight. Tenth round. <laughs> now there is a flash of the old Larry Holmes, the fast combination. He used to be so good at measuring his opponents with the left hand and coming through with the right. And he had amazing recuperative powers, too, in his prime. Man who fought the likes of Ken Norton, Ernie Shavers, Ronaldo Snipes, Muhammad Ali, Mike Weaver, Jerry Cooney. 23 previous World Heavyweight title fights. Rollfield's hands are, are getting lower and lower. He is... He is keeping them very low. He's got to be careful when Holmes has got a, a very good right hand. Holmes came into this fight with a real belief that he could be world heavyweight champion all over again. Although the money, I think, was quite a factor. His uh, businesses have had one or two problems back in eastern Pennsylvania where he owns about half the town. But I think his properties are still worth about $13 million dollars. 
and his home well he's got 11 bedrooms nine bathrooms showers and at one time he had 15 cars and seven of them were rolls royces so he's not short of a bob or two he sounds he sounds if he's he's doing all right but uh, a few million more in the bank won't hurt will it Holmes is doing rather better in this round. Holyfield, a little less. And all the time, those watching this will wonder what would happen if Evander Holyfield gets in with, say, Riddick Foe, who's due to fight Jerry... Oh, not Jerry Kirk, Pierre Kirk will be South African soon. Well, I think all in questions will be answered in due course. The first of has got to get past Larry Holmes. He's putting up a bit of stubborn resistance, although Holly Field are having ahead by a few rounds. Last few seconds of the round. One of the quietest of the contest so far. Holmes looks tired and Holyfield does a bit as well. Two fighters go back to their corners. The experience. Two rounds of the contest to go. That's what they're shouting at uh, Holyfield. Just keep boxing him, they're saying. I think, I wonder what Holyfield is feeling. I think he really would have loved to have answered his critics by putting Larry Holmes away tonight. Yes, he was in a funny position. If he'd have put Holmes away early, they would have said, well, Holmes is shot and too old. And the way it's going now, they're going to say, well, again, they're gonna, he's going to come into criticism because he couldn't put no man away. Oh, that's a good right hand from Holmes. And another one. He's really? looked very casual, Holyfield. Yes, he is. He's certainly looks very lacklustre and lethargic. I don't know whether the heat of this Las Vegas night's getting to him a bit. It is up over 80 degrees. Bad patch of the fight for Holyfield. Can Holmes take advantage of it? That eye is closing up a little bit towards the side of the right eye. I think it's going to be okay, but it is troubling, Holyfield. And there's a much more wooden look now about Holyfield. Good shot, good left hook there from Holyfield. He's got to keep the pressure on Holmes. He can't let him get a little bit of confidence. By the way, Lennox Lewis now has it seven rounds to two, one even for Evander Holyfield. That's better from Holyfield, getting the combinations together again. Good right hand. He's not throwing them in clusters anymore, Holyfield. He's trying to tend to let, let the bigger ones go in single shots. Holmes waving him in here now, and there we have an impasse. This is a nil-nil draw here. Holmes saying, come on in. Holyfield, under strict instructions from the corner, not to do that. And the reason he doesn't want to do that is because Holmes is just waiting there to counter-punch him as he comes in. Holyfield wants to fight out in the centre of the ring. I thought we were going to have a treaty signed there in the middle of the ring. Well, it looked for a moment as if they were trying to qualify for the Nobel Peace Prize, didn't it? <laughs> it did, but 
Holyfield's using his head. He knows Holmes is wise. He's trying to draw him into a fight. And Holyfield's trying to do what he thinks is the right thing. Good right hand. Blood flows again from Holyfield's eye. Holyfield came back. But Holmes is down with some good punches now. A timeout. What's the problem here? Loose tape on the right glove of Holmes. He won't mind the rest. He's uh, perhaps shown some decent right hands in this round. He threw a few good shots this round. I don't think that's going to cause any stoppage. Certainly not this late. He's had it since the sixth round, remember, Holyfield. Ooh, he's leaving himself open. And Holmes can see the gaps and he's exploding punches into them as the bell goes to end round 11. And Holyfield starting taking to take a few chances there. That's, uh, that's a nasty gas he's got by the side of the eye. Holyfield doesn't look happy, does he? He doesn't. He doesn't look fully committed in the fight. He, he seems to have lost a bit of concentration. I'm not sure. The corner's telling him to to keep in the center of the ring and box and i don't know if he's really happy with that he seems to be getting caught at distance he can be hit he's not that elusive holyfield that is a really good right cross from larry holmes and uh holyfield needed to be resilient to take that three minutes walking down in front you, you can do it you can do it you can do it you can do it well, again, the computer printout seeming to suggest that Holmes landed with a greater percentage of punches in that round. And uh, I think with those right hands, maybe Holmes did take that 11. Yes, um, I would have agreed with that one that time. I think Holmes could have, could have took that one. Last round here for the World Heavyweight title in Las Vegas. And Holmes, can he roll back the years? to give us three minutes from his payday. If he can, who knows? Well, I think in some ways he's rolled back the years just to survive and to survive so well. It would be, I suppose, from his point of view, a triumph of sorts to go the full 12 rounds with the king of the new generation. Although I'm sure he came into this fight believing he, he could actually win it. Holyfield just caught Holmes with a few good shots. A good left hook to the body and a, a good double hook to the head. <laughs> Showboating from Holmes, pulling faces. As if to say to Holyfield, well, you're landing a few, but you're not really hurting me. Well, I think Holyfield he's done everything right he's got the the win if he just keeps working but i think larry holmes will have a, a smile on his face after this fight because he's probably set up a another big tier day with george foreman now all of the oldies uh, we said it before it is a hiding to nothing for holyfield isn't it it's certainly like He was never going to come out of it unscathed. I'm certain the press will say the same thing tomorrow as they did yesterday. He's not big enough, he's not the best. But it's been a crafty, foxy old display from Larry Holmes, which is what we expected from him. But we think that Holyfield is handily ahead on points, and I suspect that Holmes probably realizes that too, although he's finishing fast here. And he's landed with some good punches again in this round. Back comes Holyfield at him. Refusing to be dominated. That's his fighting pride. And he's now finishing Holmes well. Having to cover up. Decent last round. A very good last round. Lots of action for a 12th round in a, a World Heavyweight title fight. Last 10 seconds. Blood still streaming from the eyes. It's all over. It'll go to the judges. A very hard night's work for both of them in 80-degree heat plus here. Holyfield 
for the second time against an opponent of over 40 years of age is taking the distance and I think win, lose or draw he'll take more stick from the press men tomorrow and Holmes will claim some kind of moral victory though I think for the most part he did like look like a fighter who was in there to say that he went the distance I think so he he came to survive he came to put him ashore and survive and, and really that's what he did Holyfield in my boot won it handily he did everything right but the, again as we say the, the press will give it give him a hard time he doesn't deserve it he's a good champion the one thing he's not is a heavy puncher not at heavyweight no he, he's not a he's not a dynamite one punch hitter you know as a, a Mike Tyson but he he can hit and he can put them down with one punch but on the whole he's a, a strong heavy hitter who will just keep putting on the pressure well we await the judges scorecards to be collated and then announced from our MC tonight Michael Buffer and we're in the waiting game at the moment but it will be a surprise if Holyfield has not kept his title here Evander Holyfield, one of eight children brought up by his mother in Atlanta, Georgia, with the Mr. Clean image. Doesn't crash cars or get involved in street brawls, regards himself as something of a role model. And becoming a very rich man indeed. The millions are piling up with these uh, world heavyweight title fights. 10 million pounds tonight, still we wait. You do never knew know how the judges are seeing things. That's been proved often enough recently. Now then, uh, Holyfield landed 247, Holmes 207, they reckon. That's what the computer says. But of course, it's not computers who are scoring the fight. Well, sometimes you think it is. And sometimes you think they're broken. No, I think, you know, it's going to be very hard to, to say that Evander Holyfield hasn't won this fight and won it well. But he's finished the fight with quite a nasty eye. So I think that'll lay him off for a little while. Well, there are the two principles, and it's taking quite a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, we go to the scorecard. Chuck Giampa scores about 116 to 112. That's the same score, 116 to 112 from Carol Castellano. And Glenn Hamada has it, 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Holyfield, unanimous points winner of the fight. And no arguments here about that. Two by four points, one by, what was it, six points. And Holyfield was never seriously threatened. And in a moment, we'll look to grab a word or two with the champion. The usual mayhem and chaos going on in the ring. The film stars filing out. Not one of the vintage fights, I think, in heavyweight history. Holmes, I think, was in the main too preoccupied with survival for that. It never really got interesting. Let's uh, let's hear from Holyfield. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, the Holy Spirit, and I'm dedicating this fight to my brother. No, the fight wasn't easy. I didn't come in thinking the fight was easy. The fighter had a great defense, and uh, and it's hard to pick him out, and a lot of shots that I hit, he was just able to kill. Uh, well, as I was calling it, it seemed like he rode out a lot of your punches. He parried a lot of punches and blocked a lot of punches. Of course, it seemed like you were the more active fighter. Did that seem to tire you out, him blocking and parrying a lot of punches? No, it didn't tire me out. I, I knew I had to fight a course fight. Uh, uh, because a lot of my punches wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't landing because it was slipping up. Um, it seemed like he had a you know, body very moist and couldn't get a, a lot of good body shots to him. And uh, it just showed that he's a very crafty fighter. And I, I wasn't giving out a gas. I knew I just had to not concentrate on just trying to knock him out.
but concentrate mostly on the wind. What happened there along the ropes uh, when you when that flash of I think it was his elbow that hit you in the eye. What exactly happened there in your mind? Well, we, you know, I you know I, I threw a right hand and he was swinging. He missed with a shot and his elbow caught me in. Uh, how in the eye, I, you know, something that happened my first off uh, about a win. Now, Vander, in your eyes, did you need a knockout to keep yourself as uh, as really the top dog in the heavyweight division against Larry Holmes? Does it hurt you that you didn't knock him out? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, well, you know, it's a matter of opinion on other people's part. I fought a smart fight. I went out there, and I didn't push myself to the point where that I going to get very reckless and careless because I, I knew that he was fighting a defensive fight, and it's hard to actually take a guy out with a defensive fight. I, I tried a lot of different things. I tried to let him come on, let him swing the shot, make the shot glance, and try to counter. But uh, uh, he was able to uh, recover quick and go back to the road and, and use the rope and see some direction. Now, let me ask you another question here, Evander. He hit you with some right hands. How did they affect you? You seem to take them very well. Is it that you got a great chin, or is his punch just isn't as effective as uh, that right hand as we might have thought? Well, you know, he threw some good right hand, and but I've seen the right hand come as I was able to uh, I turned with a lot of punches, so I was, wasn't able to get everything home on the punches. Well, let me, let, excuse me, Evander, and, and I thank you for answering that question. Let me ask Lou Duva. Lou, were, was there a time in that fight where you concerned about Larry Holmes? Because he was doing quite well in the earlier round. No, I was never concerned about him. The only thing I was concerned about was the cut, keeping the cut under control, which we did. It's the first time he's ever been cut, and he stood up like a can. That's right, I had Daniel. Some guys, you know, they can get cut and they can fold. He, excited, well, he never got excited about that. We just did our job and brought him along. L Lennox, Lennox Lewis is going to be fighting, from what I understand, Razor Ruddick. What's the next challenge for Evander? And, of course, you got the two old guys out of the way, Larry Holmes, George Foreman. What's really up in store for uh, for Evander? Who's the tough guy you're going to meet next? Well, we'd like to fight uh, Razor uh, Ruddick, Lennox Lewis, but especially we'd like to fight Ruddick Bow. That's the guy we'd like to fight. But if that don't work out, we'd be glad to fight the winner of, uh, of Ruddick and, uh, and Lennox Lewis. No problem. Well, uh, Evander Holyfield certainly has the opportunity since you're still world champion. Evander, good luck to you in the future. And back to you, uh, Len Ringside. So that was Evander Holyfield, still the world heavyweight champion. How convincing a performance was it against Larry Holmes? Well, something for you to discuss back there in the London studio. Well, we were right from the word, Billy, from the, right from the off, weren't we? We knew he'd win, in a way, but he's not going to get any credit from it. No, uh, well, I, was, I, I thought he'd stop him, but uh, <clears throat> it wasn't the greatest fight I've, I've seen, I must say that. But uh, I feel a bit sorry for Holyfield because... He, he will won the fight, you know, there's yeah. no way, there was no other winner. Um, um, Holmes fought, you know, he fought in spasms and uh, he made it difficult for, uh, for Holyfield, but he's going to get no credit. They're all going to say he should have knocked the old boy out and, uh, and as he didn't, he isn't a good fighter. It's a shame, really. He's you in know, a no-win situation. Do you agree with that, Gary? Yes, it was very difficult. And he said to the screen that he wasn't disappointed that he didn't stop him, but he's got to be disappointed that he didn't stop him because he would have known that to have stopped him it would have been an impressive a win and it would have been to have gone gone the distance with him uh, mike tyson who does that the way but he stopped larry holmes in what was it five four. four rounds so if he could have done something similar to somebody who was two years older then it might have been good but he had a very good game plan but when you're the heavyweight champion and you're supposed to be better than everybody else you have to prove that every time and if you've got an old man in front of you and you're making him like make you work then it doesn't do your credibility any good, although he is a good champion. But having said that, only one person ever stopped Holmes before, you know, that was Tyson, that 53 opponents, so he's a hard man to stop. Yes, yeah, so that, that was when he was a lot younger. But in all, in all fairness, but it's given all the others, Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, all the others waiting behind, if I was in their shoes now, I'd be relishing the chance to fight him for the World Heavyweight title. I'd really be looking forward to it, because he, he, he looks to me now as if, like, you know, he's counter he needs a challenge. Mm. He needs a challenge. Him himself needs a real challenge to pick himself up and really do something to say to the crowd, hey, I am the best. Right. We'll talk more in a moment, and after the break, we'll have Lennox Lewis, and we'll hear his thoughts. Don't go away. Welcome back to Ringside Special, and thanks for staying with us. Now, hopefully, on the line over at Caesars Palace, we should have Lennox Lewis. Lennox, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks for turning up and having a chat with us, bud. What What were your first impressions about the fight? I thought uh, I thought Holyfield looked really dodgy in the fight. 
you know, he looked confused at some, at some parts of it. And you could see the experience factor of Holmes really show through. Uh, Holmes should have picked up the pace and really gone after the cut. He didn't really do enough to win it, but, you know, he lasted the whole fight. I have Philly Walker and Gary Mason with me in the studio. Uh, we're all of the opinion that Holyfield will have no credit after this fight. I wonder if the, the guys would like to talk to you about that. He's definitely there for the taking, and, you know, this, looking, at, looking at this fight, it, it, did, it did him no justice whatsoever. To Lennox, what, what's, what's the feeling around ringside? What's people's reactions? Everybody seems like in a, in a state of amaze, really, with, with, with the fight and the fact that the fight went the distance and, you know, a lot of people's impressions talking to them, they were not too happy about Holyfield's performance. Lennox, uh, um, I, I was listening to a trainer and he said that um, they're going to take um, um, the, the winner of you and Riddick Bow. Uh, did you hear that? No, I didn't. Yeah, that's what he said. They said that what they said was that they, they do want Riddick Bow first but if they can't get that on, they'll take the, you, the winner of you and raise the Ruddock. Which I think is something, it's just talk, because we've just, by, after our fight and watching Evander Holyfield, Evander Holyfield will suit you perfectly, I think. I think he suits my right hand, suits my hook, suits my uppercut. He suits a lot for me. I definitely want the opportunity to box him, but I don't think he's going to give me that opportunity because of the way he looks. But don't, don't you think there at the moment, Lennox, people are saying, well, hey, why doesn't he fight one of the young, real, raw, like, real lion challengers rather than the old ones? And that's going to put you in a position where he's going to have to fight somebody like you. Holyfield's losing a lot of respect, Gary. And, uh, and as you can see for yourself and the public can see, you know, you can't fool the public for too long. Okay then, Lennox, we look forward to you doing it for yeah, us. Definitely, we, yeah. Lennox, we've all got our, we're all backing you now, Lennox. Lennox, whilst you're there, we, well, know you're, um, in, we know you're in training and preparing for a fight in July. How's your preparations going? It's going really good. I'm on. The, I'm under this. I'm. I'm actually going to school and and training. Well, you you go to school with Pepe, your new trainer. Definitely, I'm under the tutelage of Pepe Jose Carreras, and he's and he's teaching me a lot. And no, I'm no. training in Chicago. Yeah, go on. What about the opponent? Who have you got? Tell us. Let us in on the secret. <laughs> it's a big secret right, right now. I'll let you know in a couple of days. All right, All right we look forward to that. Look, you go off and do some partying. Have a beer or three for us. Mind you, you can't do that. You're training. And all the very best. Thank you. I'd like to say hi to all my British fans. Well, there's three of them sitting here, mate, so good luck. All right, great. Take care. Bye yeah. now. There you have it. So, Lennox Lewis. Yeah, I made a mistake there. I did really go. Right. Oh, listen, sometimes, <laughs> I, sometimes I'm watching fights and I don't even know the two blokes, so I say, watch him call it and so and so. No, I'm <laughs> I call them. I was quite surprised for, for a manager or a trainer to actually say that they are willing to take on, you know, Lewis or, or, or Razor. It is unusual, but the only thing is with political situations in boxing, it, it, it can all change. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know, it's like that. they can say, yes, I'll have him, because they have to, because they've been fronted by it. But that doesn't mean that you, but they, by them saying yes, then they can make an excuse and get out of it. It's easy yeah. to get out of it. You've got to say yes when you when it's on top of you, and then you just get out of it later on, make an excuse. Yeah. Well, I've heard, it, I've heard Archie Moore's in training again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, we, we've spoken about Holyfield. Let's talk about Holmes. Now, do you reckon he is going to fight Foreman? I think he might. Well, Larry Holmes, he's come back. He's made a successful comeback. And give him his credit, he deserved the world title fight because he beat Ray Mercer. Yeah, but he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't deserve to become champion, and quite rightfully he didn't, but give a good account of himself. Well, he's got, what, four million for that one. Why not go and take another couple of million for Larry, for, um, yeah, yeah. Foreman, I'd have it. I'll tell you what, it'd be more than a couple of million, because combined ages of what, well, it depends on what happens, it could 80, be 85, 86. Yeah. I mean, that's going to generate an awful lot of money. It could do, or, or maybe people might think, well, who are these two guys fooling? But Gary, listen, no, listen to the reaction in the crowd. The crowd were going, Larry, yeah, Larry. Yeah, but that's it. They just, if they've got the fans behind them, yeah. the people are willing to pay to, to watch it, then why not yeah, have the fight? I think it's more on sentiment than, than anything else. They wouldn't have the same reaction if two old guys were fighting each other. It's the, I agree, but yeah. the point is it's, it's, it's what, what sells. If people are going to watch it on television, they can put bums on the seats in yeah. the stadium to actually watch the fight, then 
Why not have it? Yeah, well, uh, it, it may well go on, and I suppose I'll be... No, it would be interesting, because we're all... I'd be interested, and everybody else would yeah. be interested, wouldn't they? Well, mm -hmm. it will be interesting. We don't know what will happen. It's all up in the air. That's all from Billy. Thanks for being with us, pal. Thanks for enjoying it. Pleasure. That's right. Gary, you'll be back next week, no doubt. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. There really is nothing like the World Heavyweight Championship, is there? Ringside will be back as usual next Thursday, and we'll feature another live and exclusive world title fight, this time between James Buddy McGirt and Patricio Olivar. That's Thursday night at 9 o'clock. So, you've seen it. It's happened. Holyfield, still the champion. From us, good night. Thank <laughs> you.